Hello and welcome to the Cooking Carolines again and we've got Sophia here. Hello. Just finished a day of um, homeschooling as well. Yeah. How did it go today Sophia? Good. Good. Hello viewers. <laughs> Hello viewers. Okay so Sophia do you want to, yeah, I don't know whether you want to join in for a little bit or. I'll see you guys at the end. Oh Bye. okay. So you... I, see, I can't wait to test it <laughs> and see if it's yummy. I can't wait to see what it looks like as well. Bye. <laughs> Bye. I love you guys. Okay, so um, so the dish that we're going to do today is coco vans. So that's really a, just a really fancy name for um, a chicken stew, really, with a bit of wine in it as well. But obviously, it's a really traditional dish in France um, and really tasty with the wine. It really adds flavour to it. So really simple. It's a nice hearty stew for these winter cold days um, and really easy to do and you can prepare it really quickly. It takes about 15 minutes to prepare and then you just leave it in the oven for about an hour and a quarter. So the first thing I've done is um, I've put the oven on at 180 degrees centigrade so that's gas mark four and that's just heating up now. Um, the shelf should be just below the middle of the oven um, and I'm going to use um, a casserole dish as well, uh, a nice um, iron uh, deep dish uh, to, so that it uh, cooks the, uh, the casserole nicely. Okay, so let's look at all the ingredients. So I'm just going to move you over here and as you can see hopefully we have got on the hob a frying pan and in the frying pan I've got 50 grams of butter and I'm just going to turn that on just to melt the butter. Uh, it goes to stirring it round, nice high heat so that um, everything melts nice and quickly. And hopefully you can just see as well my casserole dish. So um, this is a Le Creuset dish, um, but any um, strong steel bottomed um, casserole dish would be great for, for a dish like this. Um, so there we go, so that's there for all our ingredients in a second. So this is chicken. Um, I mean, there's lots of different meats you could put in and, and do more of a, a beef bourguignon and that's very similar but with beef and um, some red wine as well. Uh, but as I say, we're going to do coco van, so that's chicken in wine. Okay, so I'm just stirring that, that um, butter around. Hopefully you can see it's pretty much melted now. And then into the butter, I have got my streaky bacon. So this is 100 grams of streaky bacon. Um, I've just cut it up into strips, as you can see. And um, I'll just take these apart. So little strips of streaky bacon. I find it's easiest to um, to to um, cut them up with um, some scissors. Really quick to cut uh, through the streaky bacon. And try and buy it rindless as well, because then you don't have to take all the rind off as well. And most of them come rindless these days. So we're going to put those that into the frying pan. So that's 100 grams of streaky bacon into the butter and obviously the streaky bacon, the fat on streaky bacon will also dissolve um, into, in with the butter as that goes round. Okay, so we want it nice and crispy, uh, so it needs to fry for quite a while. Okay, so let's just look at our other ingredients. Um, I've got four chicken fillets, you could use five or um, and other parts of, of chicken, chicken drumsticks if you wanted, but I've just used chicken fillets. Um, and again, you could cut them up into dice them into smaller pieces or just leave them as they are as fillets, whole fillets. And I've got four, this which is, is going to be for four people. So a fillet each. Okay, you can hear that sizzling now quite a lot. Uh, it's going around, so it's on quite a high heat so that we really get that, that bacon frying and turning nice and crispy quickly. So looking at the other ingredients I've got, I've got 200 uh, millilitres of red wine, any kind of red wine, if you've got anything that's, that's hanging over from, um, from an evening, um, Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, any of those kind of red wines, nice sweet red wine. And we've also got to have some stock as well, so that's the stock to and water chicken stock to add the flavour to it as well. We've got lots of different flavours. We've also got some herbs going in there as well. So in addition to salt and pepper, we're going to have um, uh, a bay leaf as well going in there to add some extra flavour in there. So lots and lots of different flavours. 
as you can see that's now really sizzling nicely okay so that's going around there so sizzling away some baby onions okay shallot baby onions so i've just top and tailed them taken the um the outer coarse leaf off it off them and i've got um 100 grams of baby onions there so just a small amount if you've got any big ones you could just uh, cut those up slightly um, but otherwise they're going to go in whole so there we go so as i say there's not too much separation to do with this apart from cutting up your bacon um, and peeling the onions really so it's nice and quick we've also got some mushrooms and they will go in um, a little bit further um, towards the end of the of the cooking process so the the actual chicken casserole will go in for about an hour and a quarter an hour and a half and then you put your your mushrooms in um, it's about 20 minutes before the end so that they don't get too overcooked so I'm going to show you most of the process here. You won't see the um, the mushrooms going in because obviously that would be fairly boring for you just to stand around waiting for the uh, the chicken casserole to um, to cook through. So um, just to, to remember that they go in at about the 20 minute mark before the end of the of the cooking process. Um, obviously we will put everything on our Facebook page and on Instagram uh, the full recipe so that you can follow it at home as well. Okay, so that's starting to, the bacon is starting to crisp up now, it's getting quite nice and brown. So whilst that's doing pretty well, I'm now going to put those onions in. So those just go in whole, as I said, in they go. And again, with the onions, we're not looking to, I'm quite away. Um, with the onions, we're not looking for them to cook all the way through now, because obviously they are going to go into the uh, casserole and we're going to be in the oven for, for approximately an hour just over an hour so within the um, the cooking liquid they're going to really steam through and cook through uh, by the end of the hour hour and a half and that bacon i think you can perhaps see now is getting really nice and crispy um, and all those flavors there are, are doing really nicely into that mixture okay so we're going to add a bit of black pepper season so a nice big dollop of black pepper and I'm also going to put some salt in as well so a little bit of salt obviously towards the end of the cooking you can actually test it and just um, adjust the seasoning so if it's not quite um, got enough salt in or enough flavour you can always add a little bit more towards the end okay so that's that's pretty nicely done now the onions are starting to kind of flake off uh, the outer layers are coming off so they've, they've started just to cook through a little bit so i'm now just going to turn off the heat i'm just going to move this over to the other side and i'll just uh, put this in just so we don't lose any battery there we go so um i will show you the next phase so we're going to bring the casserole dish over and into the casserole dish i'm just going to lift out the onions and the bacon, just like that. So I'm trying to keep the, the butter in there, so I want to keep some of the liquid and some of the kind of sediment that's in the, in the bottom from the flavours of the onion and the bacon. Uh, so there we go, it's lifting it all out, that nice crispy bacon. So the last few bits. Go, last, last little bit there and last bit there we go so we've still got plenty of juices in there and into that I'm now going to put the chicken so remember those four fillets that we've got because we're doing uh, enough for four people so that's going to go in you can hear it sizzling slightly there and that's going to add some more flavor to those juices Okay, so as I said, I mean, these are actually quite big chicken fillets, so um, really you might want to cut them up and just um, cut them, cut those into four, that might actually be enough, they're very large ones, um, or if you're particularly hungry you could have a, a really big chicken fillet each like that, um, as I say you might want to just cut those up, so I'm just turning it over in the, 
turning them over in the butter like so normally I would do all four but I won't show you that at the moment because I would, I would need to do it in two batches really cooking two at a time okay so I'm just going to put those um, onto the hob again so we're going to heat up that lovely butter mixture again that we still got we've got still got plenty of uh, melted butter there to cook the chicken um, and then hopefully you can see that the, the chicken is starting to colour up it's starting to go a little bit white I'm going to keep turning it we want them to go kind of golden brown on the outside again we don't need to worry too much about cooking the chicken through because it's going to be really well cooked through because it's going in the it's going to go in the casserole dish um, and into the oven for over an hour so all we're really aiming to do here is to brown the outside of the chicken and just make sure it's all sealed in like that and it's going a nice golden color in that butter as well and we're adding more flavor to that pan those pan juices as well we've got the chicken flavor we've got the, the flavor from the bacon we've got the salt and pepper that went in there as well and um, and the onion as well so that's all adding flavor and that's now lots of that's going into the chicken as well okay so you can see that that's colored up nicely now just turn it on one more time around we go that's it making sure that all of it is colored kind of golden goldy white color there we go okay right so i'm now going to add that again to the casserole dish so you remember in the casserole dish we have the onion and the bacon so i'm now going to add the chicken to that so carefully into that as i say don't worry about it being cooked through because the cooking in the oven part is going to cook it all through Okay, so there we go. As I say, I would probably, if I'd had a bit more time, just cut those up a little bit because they're quite big chicken breasts. So, we've now got the pan. Again, so it's got that, those lovely flavours in there. I'm going to add a tiny bit more butter, so that's um, 25 grams of butter. And we're going to make a, a kind of sauce here. So it's a bit like a roux sauce, um, which I have made on the Cooking Caroline's before. I think I made that for the fish pie. Um, and also for a tuna bake, I think I did that as well. Um, so a roux is basically melted butter, and into the melted butter goes the flour. So we've got the flour, so that's another um, 50 grams of flour. So it's basically the same amount of butter to flour. So we've got um, 50 grams of butter, 50 grams of flour, and then we're just stirring that round. And we're stirring it round with all that, that lovely sediment that we've got from um, the bacon and the onions, because um, we don't want to, to dispose of all those flavours, we want those to go into the chicken and make it really, really tasty. So I'm just stirring that round a little bit. Okay, it's a little bit of a liquidy roux, that one. Um, we can always add a bit of flour later if we need to. Okay, so um, we're going to, I'm going to add in the wine. So that's the um, 200 millilitres of wine. Okay, and that should kind of thicken up. As you can see, it's going a nice, red colour now as a sauce and it's thickening up really nicely oh you can really smell the alcohol burning off that wine so as we will be burning off the alcohol you don't need to worry about using it um having this dish with children because the alcohol will all be burnt off and we'll all be left with this is a nice flavour of the wine so you can see now it's quite thick okay so we've also got to put in our stock so we've got our chicken stock cube in the bottom and I'm going to be adding in just boiling water from the kettle so I've pre-boiled the, the kettle. Uh, again all the um, amounts and the quantities will be on our Cooking Caroline page so you don't need to, to worry about putting those down now. Um, and I'm just going to stir, let's just turn that down a little bit, it's a little bit fast boiling there. So I'm just stirring in the stock cube into the water and obviously that's going to give lots of nice flavour as well so that goes there and then I'm just going to very slowly add liquid the liquid stock into what is now the wine roux the wine the butter and the flour so that's all going in there 
constantly stirring. And remember, we haven't got rid of any of those flavours along the way, so we've got all this bacon flavour and the onion flavour and the salt and pepper. And now we've got, we've got butter and we've got stock cube and the wine as well. So lots and lots of flavours in that, um, that mixture. Okay, so we're going to keep stirring that round and we want to bring it up to the boil again. So there we go. Oh, I can just see uh, Caroline Whittle's watching. Caroline Whittle's going to be doing next week and the week after uh, cooking Caroline, so watch out for her delicious food. I think she's thinking about a Chinese um, Chinese chicken dish next next week for Chinese New Year, so that should be fun. Um, and I can see she's just put up, up a little um, message saying she's very hungry now. I know that's a problem with cooking channels, isn't it? You end up just feeling really hungry. Okay, so as you can see, um, that's all stirring through it's starting to bubble at the edges there uh, again we just want it to go a little bit thicker but remember it is going to be um, cooking nicely in the oven as well so so it doesn't need to be too thick at this stage okay so that's gone in there I'm going to add just a tiny bit more um, pepper and salt just to make sure we've got plenty of flavors going in again remember to check the flavors when you bring it out of the oven at the end and just see if you do need any more salt and pepper in there and the other thing that i'm going to add now is the bay leaf so i've got a bay leaf here uh, so these are bay leaves just dry bay leaves that you can get from tesco's or anywhere else and i put that in there and that will just add more flavor in but just remember at the end to take your bay leaf out, otherwise that's not going to be a very nice taste for somebody um, in their portion if they end up with a bay leaf in with them. Okay. Oh, and hello, Cathy. Um, Cathy's watching. Very good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice to see you all there. Okay, so it's bubbling through there. Um, so that's going to be fine now. So we're going to just pour that very gently into the casserole dish. There we go. Making sure that we get all the flavours, don't leave anything behind at the bottom because we want all those lovely flavours to go in there. And then all that needs to be done now is um, you put the casserole uh, lid on, okay, and then put that into your oven and that's going to go in a fairly low shelf in the middle of the oven for an hour, just over an hour, hour to an hour and a quarter. and. As I said, just before the end, you need to just take it out and put your mushrooms in. I've got the mushrooms here. Uh, so just baby, as you can see those, just baby mushrooms. Okay, again, it's quite nice to just cut them up. So I've just washed these, or you could, if you want to peel them, uh, you can take the stalks off and then just peel from the inside and peel them round. But I think it's, they're quite fine. Um, if you just wash them and then you want to destalk them and just put cut them into half again you don't need to go too fine with them this is a nice chunky casserole so if you just halve them um, and then 20 minutes before the end put those into the casserole um, and then it'll all be cooked through uh, and there you have it there you, you've got your casserole um, I usually serve it with um, a baked potato so um, I now start to think about maybe just putting a few large potatoes in the oven, um, the bottom of the oven, and those can just cook through and they'll be ready by the time um, the casserole's ready as well. So if it was carrots, peas, um, sprouts, any of your kind of winter vegetables that you get now. Um, and it's a really nice, quick meal. Um, you can bung it in the oven, which we always like to do on the Cooking Carolines. Forget about it for an hour and then it's a really nice, quick meal for, for your family and nice and warming as well because it has been very cold. Okay, so um, I hope you enjoyed the Cooking Carolines today. As I said, the recipe will be on the website, uh, not the website, the uh, Facebook page and Instagram page, and I hope you enjoy eating it, and we'll see you again next week. Thanks very much, bye-bye.